is that bar. Uh, that extra gear, that first three steps. Huge strides in the performance. That I might not be the player I am today. All right, welcome to another episode of Behind the Gear, and uh, I'm excited today. I'm super excited to chat with uh, Matt Dalton. And Matt Dalton, for those of you who don't know, is a goaltender uh, from this kind of southwestern Ontario area, and we'll talk a little bit, dive in a little bit more about your minor hockey and where you played and stuff. But, um, I mean, a player that went from minor hockey to junior B in this area to a scholarship to the NHL to now the Olympics to, you know, playing over in uh, in, in, in Asia and Korea. And, uh, like, un, un, unbelievable, really. When you look at your whole track record, do you ever kind of look back on your or check you up on check yourself up on hockey DB and look at your rap sheet and just be like, wow, I've been a couple places here? Uh, yeah, there's been times like, uh, <laughs> I think, especially as you get older and, and, uh, you know, you, you think about it a bit more and you, you know, I look back on some of the, some of the places I've been and some of the things you've done and you're like, you know, I'd feel very fortunate, uh, you know, to still be playing, um, and, uh, some of the tournaments and some of the places I've been able to play, it's, it's been, uh, it's been great. It's been a fun ride and. You know, I hope hope it's not over quite yet. Keep it going for a few more years. So yeah, I know for sure. Now for you, uh, obviously goaltender. When did the pads like? When did you start dawning the pads? Were you a young guy who kind of started as a player, and then hey, we don't have a goalie. You just jumped in there. Yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly <laughs> how it was. Uh, you know, uh, I played my minor hockey in Seaforth, a uh, small town, and uh, I I'm pretty sure our, our one goalie broke his leg in the summer, and uh, so he wasn't going to be able to play, and I I enjoyed it. Um, I think what we did was like for a while. I think like everyone got a turn. Yeah, it's kind of rotate through. Yeah, right? yeah. and uh, I remember like I enjoyed it, and I, I I was I think somewhat good at it. And uh, the following year, I think they asked me to just play full time, and I think that's kind of how it started. And uh, just kind of took off from there. What age was that at roughly? Do you remember kind of like uh, what's is novice after Adam? Or yeah, so be like. like so Adam, uh, so yeah, be novice than Adam. Uh, it's it it's so funny when I talk to pro guys because you're like, what is the age thing yeah, again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, so like six, seven, eight would be novice, then nine, ten. I would say it'd be Adam. like nine or ten or yeah, something okay. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and then just kind of stuck with it from there, and uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it's been awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Because um, it's always interesting. Like I always wanted to play net, and then I got a yeah. chance to play net in like an exhibition game. And I didn't want to play that after that. The, the gear was big. I was yeah. older too, like 10, 11 yeah. cumbersome. Like I was yeah. like, Oh my. And I, I sucked. And I was like, this is so getting into it at, at young ages. I was asking your ages. Cause I think a lot of times, you know, I think it's important for players, young players to play different positions, obviously. And then you're going to migrate to a defense or forward for sure. at some point. You know what I mean? But goaltenders, it seems like, you know, that'll happen where, Hey, do you want to play net for the year? And the kid's like, yeah, sure. And then a lot of the kids would just stick, stay in net. Yeah. And then, I, I, I loved scoring goals too, though. Yeah, like yeah. I, I, I loved uh, being a player and scoring goals, and and uh, but I don't know. My parents maybe maybe they seen something or someone seen something and uh, just told me to stick with it. And yeah, uh, yeah. oh, that's cool. So, yeah. Um, and then going from small town, obviously in Seaforth, did you play a lot of other sports growing up? Like in yeah. those, yeah. you guys play all ball together. Yeah, all, you know? definitely, definitely different than it is now. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, I never played summer hockey. As I got older, um, I played in a few tournaments on like select teams and yeah. stuff like that. But um, my my dad was a big baseball guy, so we played hardball, and uh, I really think it helped me uh, being a goalie uh, with hand eye coordination and stuff like that. Um, but the, yeah, the, the hockey equipment went away all summer, and yeah. and, and honestly. I w it didn't bother me. I loved baseball. You know, I, I still love baseball. I have a huge passion for baseball. And uh, that was what my focus was on in the summer. And, and you know, we'd dabble in everything. You know, we'd have the basketball on that outside. We And, you know, we'd play, play a bit of everything, tennis and stuff like that. But um, definitely my parents really encouraged dabbling in, like, yeah. everything and, and um, playing all different kind of sports, so. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And yeah. brothers and sisters for you? you? Yeah, I have an older brother and a younger sister. And uh, same thing, like, they dabbled in everything too. And it helped, obviously, having an older brother. For that, sure, yeah. You know, competing against him, whether it's basketball or baseball or whatever, you know, you're always, and his friends, you know, he was two years older. So I was always trying to, <laughs> yeah. you know, keep up and stuff like that. And, and um, 
looking back, you know, it, it definitely helped me. So, yeah. Yeah. No, oh, for sure. Uh, this is a fast forward question here, but now when you, when, when you retire, which hopefully it's in another 10 years, but <laughs> would you play net in men's league or would you play football? Forward, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely not. I'll never touch the goal <laughs> equipment ever again. It's It'll, funny, man. Yeah. Any goal you ask this question to, like, no, I like anybody who's retired now is a goal ex goal tender, like, no, no, I play out. Like, I yeah. do not play that anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's uh it's pretty hard on the body. And <laughs> yeah. uh like I said, I love scoring goals. I, I love to get back out there and just be that lazy right winger, just, <laughs> just you know, just hitting standing at the blue line. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's kinda where my head's at with that. Anyway. And I mean, when you say like you, you as a goaltender, really, let's be honest, as any hockey player, as a goalie, you have probably the most, especially as a number one goaltender on a team, you have the, the most leeway on saying whatever you want about any player, because you're basically sitting back with a yeah. whole view of every guy. So when a guy misses a pass or a guy's lazy on the back check, you're seeing this firsthand. You're like, I, I truly believe that. And I yeah. think that's why goalies make, you know, you see a lot of goalies become coaches and, and uh, general managers and stuff like that. And, and I believe, I really believe it because everything's in front of you, like you said, and you, you, you see everything. Like um, and you, when a guy misses a guy in a back check or a guy miss, doesn't get a puck out on the wall and you get pinned in your zone for two minutes and you got to make four saves, you know, you remember that. Like, um, so I, I really believe that you see the game a little bit different for sure. So Definitely. No, for sure. One thing I always like to ask goalies is, so if I'm a defenseman or I'm a forward, doesn't matter what, what position on the on the on the as a player, I mess up a pass or I, I cough up a breakaway, right? I get back to the bench, I got a coach that's either gonna yell at me or say, Hey, don't worry about it. I got buddies who be like, Hey man, don't worry about it, it's fine, I'll get it, or whatever happens, happens. There's dialogue there. But as a goaltender, I mean you're in that half cage in the blue paint, you just get scored on, maybe let in a, a terrible goal file, you know, something yeah. that squeaked through on you. Um, what's that like? Cause you're, you're on an Island, man. You're all, you're by yourself in that net kind of dealing with it. So what's it like for you as, as a, as a goalie? Cause the mental part of the game is such a massive part for every so player, big. but for a goaltender, like, wow. Yeah, I it, mean, it's, it's, that's what amazes me now. Um, when I watch the NHL and these leagues and I see these young goalies that are breaking in like Carter Hart and that Blackwood in New Jersey, I think is yeah. his name. And these guys, um, it's, it's one thing to be super talented and all that kind of stuff, but to have the mental strength to be able to play that position at that level at that age, it's insane. Yeah. Um, because for me personally, I don't really think I got that mental side of it um, until I was like 27 years old, maybe. Really? And yeah, I really do. Yeah. Like, you know, I'd have, I'd have spurts of it. Sure. You know, when things are good, everything's good, but then you'd, you know, when it's bad, it's bad, <laughs> yeah. right? Like the ups and the downs. And that mental aspect of it is so crucial. And that's what amazes me with these young guys because, you know, it's really easy to get caught up in what everyone's saying about you with social media and all this stuff nowadays. And, you know, as a young kid, you know, you can doubt yourself and have questions in yourself and, and you know, but as you get older and, you know, you become comfortable with yourself and, maturity and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's a little easier to block that stuff out. And for me, it took me a little bit l longer. And I think it does for a lot of people too, like especially at that position, you know, you don't usually see 21 year old goalies playing in the NHL. Like it's, it's not a, sure, yeah. it's not a, you know, so it's such a huge part of it. And, and for me, um, like I said, it took a little bit longer and, try to try to just kind of not get too high, not to get, get yeah. too low. And I know everyone says that, but it, it is actually a, it's tough. You know, it's, it's one of those things like, you know, you play one night and you start make 50 saves and, and you feel like you're on top of the world. And the next night, you know, you might not feel like you can stop a beach ball. Yeah. And it's, it's your maturity, how you can level that out. And, and, you know, instead of that night that you feel like shit, instead of letting in five and getting pulled halfway through the second, it's, grind it out and win the game five, three or something like that, you know, and that's, that's the step that you got to make. And it's, it's hard. It's when you're young. No, I, yeah, I can't imagine, man. Now I know nowadays, like those Carter hearts and those Blackwoods, like they're, they're getting a lot more coaching. They're getting probably, they sure. all have a mental coach and yep. it's different now, right? You gotta, you gotta, yeah. So back in the day, like anything back for you, it, that was probably just starting to happen later in your career where there was more and more of that going on where you had a, obviously a goalie specific coach, you had a mental coach, you had a weight, you know, strength training coach, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
but not having that and kind of going through it, was it more like influences from your parents or your brother or, or buddies or coaches that kind of helped you say, hey, listen, man, you let a bad goal in, like just don't worry about it, park it or whatever kind of things that you did, that you did. But where did that come from at, at, at young ages to kind of, even though it was a bit of a rocky road, like we all yeah, had, right? Yeah. A little inconsistent, but for sure. Well, you know, what, like who are some of those influences I, for you that kind of helped you navigate that a little bit? For sure, my dad, you know, I, it's funny. I look back on it now and, you know, there could be a game in juniors where I'd let six goals in and we'd get in the car or whatever on the way home. And he's like, oh, those D are terrible tonight. And I look <laughs> back on it now and it's like, you know, yeah, but I was probably terrible too. <laughs> and, uh, but that was his whole thing. Like always, he'd be like, uh, you know, ah, what are they doing? You know, like, you know, what's your D doing? Like take the pass away or whatever yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. And, and you know, he was kind of the guy that always kept me, high and yeah and uh i just it's funny i look back on it now and uh you know i'm sure there was some nights that he probably could have told me to get my head in my ass <laughs> but, but uh he never did anyways but he was definitely that guy um you know my parents weren't as involved i think as maybe parents are nowadays um you know obviously they were at all the games and stuff like that but a lot of the times when we got in the car on the way home like it wasn't hockey you know it was yeah. uh it was other things and uh there was never pressure there was never anything like that it was you know i look back on it and i was lucky i was very fortunate uh, my parents were always very supportive and you know if I, they were never they would never tell me to do something but if i wanted to do something they would always support me you know whatever it was you know if i said hey i want to go try out for this team or i want to go to this you know that here you go here's the car you know yeah. go so i was very fortunate that way but uh they were huge Huge for me. And I, I think every person's going to say that, you know, their parents are, without your parents, you know, we're not going to get the opportunities that we've been able to have. So. Well, it's funny, man. Like o over the years of doing this even podcast, but even just being involved in hockey, you, you see all sorts of different types of parents. And you do see some kids that are successful and you know their dad's a whack job who's right. yelling at them in the car. And, right. you know, I find that more often than not, it's going to burn a kid out or get a Big kid time. to push back a little bit, right? I was fortunate as well. My, my parents zero like my mom was probably harder than me and my dad like why can't you score in that big net with a little puck you know I'm like mom like it's not that easy but um but i think having those parents that are supportive that, that keep you accountable you For know sure. if you mess up they're, they're accountable and i also feel it's really important that the whole experience especially at young ages going to the rink playing hockey all that stuff it's got to be a fun experience it's got to be 100%, enjoyable 100%. you know if any kid's anxious to go to the rink because oh man dad's gonna watch he's gonna be looking at me he's gonna be pointing like that's not fun and i think for you and myself included like I had a really good experience. I enjoyed going to the rink because my parents made it fun. It was enjoyable. And when I got in the car, I never worried about my dad. I was hard yeah. on myself, probably like you were. Like, sure. dad, I didn't play good. For tonight, sure. Man. Exactly. Oh, no, you played good. You yeah, worked hard. Exactly. Like, no, I was bad. Like, yeah. And I was almost you know, hard on myself than my parents were. But I enjoyed the car rides home. I enjoyed talking yeah. about the yeah. game. You no, know, 100%. And so I think those are like, those are those little, and I know, you know, and we'll get into this a little bit. You're a father. I'm a father. And whether it's hockey, baseball, school, whatever, those are things that I want to like, bring to my kids i don't want them to feel anxious about failing a test in yeah. school or yeah. messing up in the soccer pitch or screwing up a, a, a buzzer beater in basketball like 100%. don't worry about it buddy it's fine yeah you know? it's and, life yeah, yeah and yeah. just kind of going through that way now real quick kind of what's that self-talk like when you do let yeah. a bad goal so like, no, for sure i think it's like are I, you hard on yourself like this kind of not no? i really not anymore yeah you know i i uh at the end of the day uh, and I think this comes with, I'm a lot different now than I was when I was 25 years old. For like, sure. You know, the way I look at it now is it's one goal, you know, like no matter if a guy comes down in a breakaway and goes bar down on you or you let in a squeaker from the corner, you know, at the end of the day, it's just one goal. And, you know, yeah, it might be a bit of a momentum, but it's just one goal. And, yeah. and, you know, you just focus on the next shot and, and, uh, you know, and I think a lot of young goalies get in this where that one goal will ruin their game. Sure. You know, and, and that's a maturity step that you have to take where you're not going to let that one goal ruin your game. Like there's been times where I let in a bad goal and I said, okay, I'm not going to let another goal in the rest of the game. And literally not going to let that goal affect anything yeah. going forward. Like it's very easy to overthink things after that or, or but then the game at the end of the day, it's the same game. Nothing's changing. Like it's, uh, just because you let that goal in, you don't have to change the way you play. It, yeah. it, it's just one goal. And then, and once you get that mentality and, and not be worried about 
what the people are saying on the bench or what the people in the crowd are saying. Cause that's a thing too. You know, yeah, you sit there, sure, yeah. you sit there and you're like, Oh, I let that shitty goal in. Everyone in the crowd's like, Oh, that guy sucks. Or, Oh, what's he doing? Well, who cares? Just don't let another one in or, yeah. you know, you can still win the game two one yeah. or you can still win the game. You know, it, who cares what they say? They're paying to watch you, watch you play. Yeah. So uh, once you get that mentality where you're not going to let that ruin the rest of your game, that's a huge hurdle because uh, the consistency is what people want to see. You know, like sure, yeah. the ups and the downs. You know, if you're a coach, there's nothing that drives a coach crazier than a guy that you don't know what you're getting every night. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, he might be the best guy tonight, but tomorrow, you know, he, they even show up, you know. So that yeah. drives coaches crazy. And if you want to play and you want to make a career out of it, you got to be consistent. Yeah. Like you, yeah. That's, well, and – I think that's a good word, and I think whether you're a 4D goalie, doesn't matter. That consistency is massive. Yeah. Um, and throughout your entire career, basically, you've been pretty consistent, yeah. you know, as far as putting up good numbers and being a very reliable goaltender. Now, you go from junior B in this area, then you go down, I think you played in the USHL a little bit as well, right? Yeah. yeah. What was the jump like back then going from the junior B loop in this area, which was pretty strong, that like, yeah. you know, scholarships coming out of it a little bit. But I'm, I'm assuming for you, you're like, I want to kind of pursue – scholar like was it was the ohl an option then or was it it was um but so there was a guy from seaforth seaforth had a pretty good tradition of like for a small town of players that went on to play and we had like um boyd Devereaux, um mike watt um rem murray the murray brothers there's a bunch of brothers and yeah. um there's a guy closer to my age Derek nesbitt was his name and he played junior b in sarnia and went to ncaa uh, at ferris state university and I was pretty close with him and his family. And uh, I remember as a kid, I was playing junior and uh, they were playing in Michigan and uh, we went over and watched them play. And I remember getting to the rink and like seeing this. It's sick. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, this is unbelievable. I'm like, I think like, they're at school. Like this is, and I remember just in my head thinking like, why don't I try to do this? Like it gives me more time to develop. Yeah. And uh, I had an opportunity to, you know, to go play in Sarnia and to go play up in the Sioux and stuff like that. And at the time, um, Sarnia had a goalie that was, I don't know if anyone remembers, his name was Ryan Munz. He was a pretty high pick to LA, like a second round pick as a goalie. And I just looked at it and I'm like, where do I fit in sure. here? You know, and I think kids have to be smart with that. You know, you can go and burn your whole career and it's done like you've got to you've got to be smart when you decide where you're going to go play especially as a goalie there's only one guy that plays yeah you know like so i looked at that and i i said you know what after going to watch this guy play in college i'm like i'm going to try to go to college and so what i did was i went and looked online and i said where do all these players play that are going to college before they go to college like how are they getting there sure so I seen that they're playing in this NHL and this USHL. So what I did that summer was I emailed every single team in junior hockey in the NHL and the USHL. Yeah. And two teams emailed me back. And the one team, this was in the NHL, NHL. So yeah. I went to the NHL, that league the year before. And the team that emailed me back was like the worst team in the league out, out in Bozeman, Montana. And I'm like, holy shit, like that's pretty far. And yeah. They're brutal. But I said, you know, what? I'm doing it. So, and, I, and that's when I go back to my parents were always so supportive. My, my parents were like, okay, let's pack the car up. You're going. So we drove out to Montana and went out there. And uh, it was one of the best years of hockey I ever had. We had an amazing team. We're like worse. We were, they were worse the year before and we finished first that no year. Way. And, were, and were you the number one guy there? Yeah. 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 It was, Sick. It was yeah. unbelievable. And uh, we actually went to the finals. We lost in the finals. Um, and then our team sold. And uh, they they were moving, which everyone was devastated because we loved it out there. Yeah. And so when that happened, we all became free agents. So we had the right to be able to go play wherever we wanted. And that's when I got picked up by Des Moines and went and played in Des Moines. And, uh, you know, it, that was an awesome experience, too. We had a great team. That league's of, pretty cool, though, eh? Yeah, like, it was good. It was good fans. Like, a lot of the cities have good fans, good teams, real high caliber. For sure. And, yeah. uh, you know, like everyone on our team had a Division One scholarship, you know, like six maybe five or six of the guys were drafted you know to the nhl and you know we had a great team and and uh that was an awesome experience too and great coach great city um i was very fortunate you know like where i was able to play juniors and uh the people i was billeting with and all that kind of stuff it was an amazing experience so yeah, um great. 
but yeah, going back to how college, I just, I realized like, you know, if I want to do this, I got to put myself in the best situation where I'm going to get seen, where I can get an opportunity because, you know, at that time in junior B, there'd maybe be three or four guys getting a scholarship a year under the whole junior B loop. And, and I was like, ah, oh, you know, the odds aren't the greatest, right? You got to be like killing it. Yeah. And, uh, so that goes back to, you know, doing your homework and, you know, kind of looking out for yourself a little bit and doing what's best for yourself. And, and, uh, it all worked out. So that's, I love it. And two things I want to highlight there. Number one is you're a goaltender mm-hmm. and you, you realize at a young age, I'm sure by talking to parents, coaches that goalies develop a little bit later, like getting 100%. a 21 year old goalie in the NHL is very rare. You're going to be 24, 25, 27 yeah. sometimes. Exactly. Um, so for you saying, you know what, I could jump on the OHL, which a lot of kids do like, Oh man, I get to sign a deal. I'm going to practice with them. And they blow everything because they play an exhibition game or whatever, right? And then yeah. they can't go to college. But understanding that, being like, hey, man, I can play another couple of years of junior, develop. For sure. Maybe to get a scholarship, and then that changes my path a bit. I think that is massive. The other thing that I want to highlight is, and I did the same thing, man, is I looked on NCAA Division One. That's where I wanted to go. It was Division One. I looked on N- every team, and I looked at rosters. I looked at who's, like, you know, coming up. And I looked sure. at, I'm from Sudbury, Ontario, so kind of like similar to Seaforth as far as small town. We had a junior loop up there. It was terrible. Um, no offense to the junior boys up there, but there was no scholarships coming out of there, right? So I knew that, I knew that coming out of midget and stuff that I had to leave. And Toronto was the best spot because the, the at that time the Metro League and the OJ was like getting scholarships. So I, yeah. you know, same thing. Mom, dad, I, I got to move to Toronto. Yeah. Okay. We're, like, where do you think? And same thing. Look at the teams. Look at teams you that were losing to. guys. You have to. And then contacted a couple of junior teams. Got an opportunity. And I remember emailing a ton of NCAA teams. Um, back then, you know, writing letters and sending them to them and, hey, I'm interested in scholarship, da da da. These are my numbers, my stats. Um, and same thing, you get replies from all these, you know, schools, just random replies, obviously right. standard ones. But but what I'm getting at is for a lot of these kids, they just sit back, like play and just like, well, I hope something happens, right? Well, yeah, go out and get you it. Got, yeah, you got to pursue yeah. it a bit, like contact teams, contact there's, schools. Like, there's only so many Connor McDavid's, you know, and like Sidney Crosby's where, you know, everything. You know, it's easy not, to find them. That, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. like, so the majority of people, you know, like there's a lot of kids playing hockey and you know, the, the difference, the gap isn't as much as you would think. And, and maybe that difference is just you sending that out so that then they look at you and they say, Oh geez, like, yeah, this guy, cause there's no way that with all these junior leagues and everything out there, they just, you can't, sometimes you're just not seen, you know, there's just that many players out there that um, you got to, Take the bull by the horns because what's the worst that can happen? They say no. Well, yeah. okay. Like, right. That's, that's why I tried to tell these, there was a couple of young kids down there the other day, a kid playing junior. I said like, email every team. You want to go get a scholarship? I said, email every team. I said, what? You don't have one right now. So what's, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Just say yeah. no. Yeah. Like, oh, you yeah. know, like you, you've got to take the bull by the horns because uh, it's just so competitive. You know, yeah, and the other thing too, I, I tell kids the same thing. And let's say my young guys working with us is tr- is trying out for a Bantam AAA team, right? He's 12, 13 years old. I tell them it's going to be awkward, it's going to feel weird, but right. the first trial, you go up, find the head coach, yeah, and you go up, hey, Mister Smith, I my name's Jack Smith. I just want to let you know I'm really thank thanks for I'm here to try out. Just so when your name pops up somewhere, he's like, oh, that kid came up and said, like, only kid in the group probably, yeah. or one of two that came up and said, hey. Thanks for the opportunity to try out for your team it or whatever takes, it is, it right? It takes ten seconds. And then those emails or those letters that you send to these teams, it may it may just separate you a bit where they're at a they're at a tournament and they're watching a showcase tournament junior and they're like, That's that Jack Smith kid that emailed me. That's him. Okay, well wow, he's that, he's got character, right? He's 100%. got he's got a set of balls on him. He reached out. Like for sure. So I, there's all those little things I agree with you that kind of separate you a little bit. And I think it's massive, but a lot of a lot of kids don't do it. Right? No, and I get it. It's it's not the most comfortable thing to do. Right. And, and, uh, I think it goes back to that, you know, being comfortable with yourself too, at a young age, it's hard, you know, like, yeah. you know, growing up at 17 and that, like, it's, it's, it's a difficult time for kids. And, and, um, you know, I think everyone is very scared of rejection too. And, 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 you know, failing for you sure. Know? Yeah. You know, and, and, and I think the sooner that you can become comfortable with that, things are going to open up for you. Like, yeah. like don't be scared of it. Like embrace it. Like you're going to, it's going to happen. Like, so, so don't be scared of it that it's going to, ha- like for how many times I've failed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things that, and, 
for young kids, I think they're so scared of it because of what someone's going to say or, you know, social media and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a different world now too, you know. Oh, like, for sure, man. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like you think of some of the times where you messed up, maybe you blew a game or maybe a, sure. maybe you messed up sure. with the coaches, whatever it is, like anytime I've done that or screwed up, it, it's been a learning experience. 100%. Like, I remember a quick story, we were in Midget and um we all went out and remember like dashing and or uh, dining and dashing, right? Yeah. So we're all the whole teams out with this, you know, we're at this dinner or whatever and Everyone leaves. My parents weren't there, but I had money to pay for dinner, but I didn't. I just like oh, I walked away on the bill, basically. Four or five of us did, right? And then uh, our GM comes on the bus. He's like, hey, like, dude, that was young, like, you know, minor hockey, but hey, there's uh, four, this is what they had. And they probably knew who it was. Four people. And I was like, not that kind of guy. I was a bit of a leader. Like, I was not that. Yeah. But I, I, I screwed up. There's four people that didn't pay. This is what you had. So so and so paid for you guys. We expect that money by Monday when we get back to town. Like, I was shitting my pants for like two days. I typed up a letter because I didn't want to like them to see my handwriting. So I was so right. embarrassed. I think my bill was like $12. So I typed up a letter, put a 20 spot in there, folded it, put it in, put the guy's name on it, slid it under the coach's door and never said a word about it. But I was like, but I've never done that again. Like, oh, for sure. you know what I mean? It's one of those yeah. things where I'm like, that was such a dumb move even then. And now I'm like, you know, but you know, you're young, you're stupid, but you learn from that stuff. And hopefully, right? like, yeah. And hopefully you don't do it again. You know, like, and now when, when young kids come to me, I'm sure you as well. And they're talking about something that they've done that was stupid. You're like, buddy, don't worry about it, man. Like, I've seen like 100%. everything by now, pretty much. Like, exactly. It's fine. You can get through this, you know? Yeah. At the time it seems like such a big, big thing. Right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's, it's one of those things. I think we've all been in those situations. Totally. Before, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Now going from uh, USHL, you, you end up getting a scholarship to Bemidji State, which I played against Bemidji a bunch when I was in Alabama, and it was it was a, we had a wicked rivalry actually because they went from D two to D one, and so did we. Yeah. Right at the same ooh, right at the same time, so we played against each other all the time, and um, yeah, they were it was awesome. But they had a, they ended up kind of just becoming this this hockey uh, th- like the culture there and, yeah. and the team and the so you were kind of getting in there right in that kind of we had a really good class. Um, they had been to the tournament a couple t- years before that, like back to back years and stuff. And uh, they did a, we had a pretty good, the class above us was a pretty good class. And then the class that came under us was pretty good. So we had a pretty good three years yeah. there where that, that makes a pretty big difference. And, and honestly, that was quite an experience too. Like I, I went from the USHL where, you know, I was a USHL all star, you know, I was, you know, I f- was p- pretty high recruit. I remember being on the NCAA list as the number one incoming goalie recruit in the nation and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I was going into this school where we had a senior goalie and I didn't know anything about him, but I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to play. Like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> like I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like we just, all did coming out of junior. It's like, if I knew I was going to play, I would have just went somewhere else. Like, you know what I mean? Like you have that kind of immature mentality and, and, uh, what a, what an experience, what an eye opener, you know, and, and there was parts of it where it was the best thing that could ever happen to me at the time. You know, I was considering like, I'm going to quit. Oh, you know? we all did this in, in college, man. And, and yeah. going in as a freshman, they broke me down. Like, you know, like I was devastated, man. I was like, what is going on? Like here, like I was supposed to be this like hot shot recruit and all this kind of stuff. And like, I'm just a, nobody yeah (laughs) you know like and uh I didn't play very much and you know I you know I'd have one good game and then one shit game and yeah and you know looking back on it now the other goalie was a great goalie ended up signing an NHL contract and played pro for many years and so it's not like the guy was a a puck bag you know but uh it was just quite an experience you know I I I had to learn how to train I had to learn how to because none of that stuff everything just came naturally. And, and I never really had to do that stuff. And, um, I remember my end of the year meeting with the school, like with the team and they just basically ripped into me. Like just said like, <laughs> like, are you just going to be a waste of talent? And like, just kind of like, what, what are you going to do? Like, like, and I remember like, I was devastated. I was like, I'm here for the, I can, I chose to come here. Like why? Yeah. And I remember leaving that and going home for the summer. And I remember saying to myself, okay, I'm going to put everything I have into this, this summer. And I said, 
I'm going to train my ass off and I'm going to do everything I can to give myself the best opportunity. Cause I knew that guy was leaving. Yeah, so sure. the door was open for me to have a good opportunity. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And that's just the way it is. So I remember I was, uh, I was working in a pig barn all summer. And then at the end of the day, I'd go to this little shitty gym and I'd work out <laughs> and do that every day. And I was in the best shape of my life. And, and, uh, I went in and I remember I didn't get off to a good start either. Like I remember like, I don't know, first two, two or three games was just okay. And then the other guy that I was kind of battling with got hurt. So I knew I was going to, I was going to have to play. Yeah. I kind of just got hot and I just kept, you know, I remember one night and I got a shutout against St. Cloud and it just kind of kept going, kept going. And, and, uh, we, we went on an amazing run. We ended up going to the final four and, and, uh, you know, it, it happened so fast. And, uh, but I learned a lot about, you know, putting the work in and, and all that kind of stuff. And it was probably the best thing. Like if they weren't that hard on me, yeah, you know, I probably wouldn't. And they were hard. Like that was back in the day when yeah, like, you could be hard, you could be hard. And, uh, yeah, it was quite a, quite an experience. I, I look back on it now and, and, uh, you know, at the time I was frustrated and I hated it, but, you know, there was a lot of things that I took from that. So yeah, it was yeah. good. And then, yeah, we just went on a, we went on a run. That's unreal, year. man. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. after that run, obviously when you're on a run like that as a goaltender, I want to talk about two things on this, but the high, like when you're our, and as a player, I talked to someone just the other day about this one, you know, when you like, you're playing and, and, and I was talking to this player, but every time you move a pocket, it just goes in the net or yeah. someone puts it in you're like, man, everything I'm touching is gold right now. Right. So as a goaltender, when you get on and when you get on a bit of that high, usually it comes with, a bit of a clunk by the end because it's not right. you know you're doing something to help this out and obviously you're working hard and then when you stop kind of hitting the gas right things go down right so for a goaltender when you're on a bit of a high you're getting a bit of a win streak put together a couple of shutouts or yeah how hard is that mentally to stay focused and not be like i'm pretty good it no, is I'm, when I'm you're young solid. like that but you've got to not focus so much on the result but focus on the process so that's a big thing that i've kind of like there's been games that i've played really well and I've let in three goals sure. four goals and there's been games that I've been fighting it all night and I let in one goal so and you've got to be honest with yourself and understand your game and not worry so much about the result and worry about the process mm -hmm. just worry about you know the technical side and you're doing the things right that you're supposed to be doing and everything else will take care of itself yeah over the season the numbers everything they'll all take care of themselves you just got to focus on the process. And that's where I go back to the bad goal too. Like don't focus on the bad goal. Just focus on the process. And, the re you know, people get so tied up in the results yeah. and stats and all this kind of stuff. And if you do the right things, it'll all take care of itself. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of my mindset. I like that, on yeah. It. And, and because it's very easy, especially when you're younger, to get caught at save percentage oh like especially on the ice you're like looking at the shot clock and like oh yeah a couple sure you know stuff like that and it's toxic that's it's so toxic and it's not the mindset to have like it's just just focus on the process yeah. and and that stuff will all take care of itself because you can't control how many shots you get in a game so why are you worried about it yeah like you know like there's gonna be nights where you get 15 shots maybe or 20 shots and you got to you gotta be dialed in. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's, yeah. yeah. Cause I used to be that guy that always played great when I get 45 shots. Cause I was so dialed in, you know, I was so busy. Yeah. But then you start to play on good teams and you might only get 20 shots, 25 shots that night. And you better stop them. You know, <laughs> yeah. like there's nothing worse than when you're yeah. on a good team and they, you give up 20 shots and the goalie lets four or five in. Sure. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. so yeah, that's, and that comes with the maturity thing too, right? And yeah. I, I think it's changed, like you said, with all these goalie coaches and mental coaches and stuff like that. But back when I was going through, it was kind of like just figure it out on your own, like yeah, you know. And it, I think that's why it took guys a little bit longer to figure it out. Yeah, that's a good point for sure. Yeah. Um, and then so after that, after that run, basically, you're kind of on a bit of a heater. So the second question I have for you there is now you're probably starting to get a lot of love from pro yeah. hockey, right? Because yeah, yeah. you're on a you know you're a second year guy, you're young. And I'm sure you had a bunch of teams that were kind of looking at you. And it's so what happened after like, what, yeah, what happened there? It's funny. He's bringing that up because 
I remember, like, you got to understand, like, I was a guy that came from Seaforth, Ontario. Like, yeah. played, I played double C hockey. <laughs> and, like, you know, and, and, you know, and then I played some junior hockey with some guys that were drafted and stuff like that. But then, you know, I went into NCAA, and I didn't play my whole first year. I played, like, four or five games or something. Yeah. So it all came so quickly. And, you know, all of a sudden, like, I got agents calling me and stuff like that. And I was kind of like, well, this is, like, What's going on here? But and to this point, just to kind of backtrack, so to this point, undrafted to the OHL. Right. Right? No agent, because now kids have agents in band. I'm like 14, no, no agent. No. And then undrafted to the NHL, obviously, right. through your draft year. Even though I had a really good junior, you know, yeah. junior career, yeah, little good. junior career in the in the, in the Naha and the, in the USHL. Get to college, just playing, man. Just yeah. coming here to play. Just want to play, do well. Hopefully, hopefully get some pro in after. But So now you go on a run, and then all of a sudden, boom, everything kind of gets flipped upside down, where now you got NHL teams For sure. On and, you. and agents. And it's funny, because like my whole life, I remember growing up and just being like, if I could play junior B hockey, I was like, that'd be pretty damn cool. <laughs> I was like, you know what? If I just play junior, that's pretty damn cool. And then you play junior, and you're like, ah, you know, if I could play college, you know, that'd be pretty damn cool. Yeah. I remember being in college, and I was like, well, you know, even I go play in the East Coast League for a couple of years sure. or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. Like, just go play some pro hockey yeah. and stuff like that. And it just kept going. And, and yeah, so you got these agents calling you and stuff like that. And and so I, I picked this agent and, um, you know, and it was just kind of light communication and stuff like that. And then as things, we kept moving and moving. And I remember, like, we were playing in the NCAA tournament. We were playing. We were the 16 seed. And we played uh, Notre Dame. They were the number one. And, we, like, I remember <laughs> we were playing in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So I had a couple buddies from back home. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, shit, you know, like, we'll come down and watch the game or whatever. And, you know, we'll go out at the bar after. Well, after, like, after you get know, pumped. Yeah, exactly. We're like, we'll go, exactly. We're like, we'll go out to the bar. And, and uh, shit, we ended up winning, like, 5-1 the first night. And I was like, fuck, that was, that was weird. And they're like, oh now I guess we got to stay like we're going to watch. So then the next time we played Cornell and I was like, okay, tonight we'll party for sure. Winner and for anyone who doesn't know that NCAA, uh, that tournament is a single elimination. That's so right, it's, yeah. it's kind of, cr it's crazy. Like it's like the basketball bracket set up basically, but yeah, so it's nuts to see, you know, yeah, you, you're one win away from advancing obviously every single night. Right. So yeah. And uh, so now you're playing Cornell the next night. Yeah. We played Cornell the next night and uh, I don't know if it was four or two or something or Something like that. We end up winning again, and and uh, I remember being in the moment, and everyone was freaking out, like all my teammates and everything like that. And for whatever reason, I didn't know really how big of a deal it was in the moment. Like I was just kind of like, okay, like we guess we move on or whatever. And like we were the first ever 16 seed to ever make it to the final four and everything like that. And and you know, I it took me a while for it all to sink in, kind of. Yeah. And it was it was a pretty special moment because. Being so close to home, my family was able to be there and, uh, you know, all my buddies. And then after the game, we were able to party and, and uh, you know, and then you get the private planes and stuff like that. And that was a pretty cool experience. That's cool. Yeah. And and I remember walking out of the rink um, to meet up with my family and friends that night. And, and an agent came up to me and was like, you know, do you have an agent? Blah, 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 blah. He's like, you know, I think you probably, this will be your last college game or whatever. And I was kind of like. What, what, what do you mean? Like, he was like, well, I'm sure you'll be signing after this. And that was the first I ever heard of it. Like, really? Yeah. I never, I never had any contact obviously with any team yeah. and, and my agent at the time never like said anything about that teams were talking to him or anything okay. like that. And, and probably because I was still playing and, and uh, hindsight, I kind of wish I didn't know that, you know, you, as a young yeah. kid, you kind of, you know, cause you, we went back to school and there was a break. There was like a week break before you go play the final four. And, and, uh, I had that in my head the whole time, you know, like, you know, I was excited. Oh, like who wouldn't, be? you know, like, I, I, yeah. And, uh, going into that final game, uh, we played Miami of Ohio, which was like a great school. And, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know we lost four or two or something like that, but the whole time in my head, I knew like, well, scouts are watching and people are yeah yeah, yeah. and it, it had changed the whole thing because all before that it was always just playing for the boys playing yeah. for fun like yeah and it changed kind of my view on it a little bit like i was like oh like this is real like people are watching now and like and it happened so quick right like it just and uh and then yeah after the game i had you know a couple teams to choose from or whatever and 
made the decision and signed, right? So, um, was it a, was it a tough decision? Oh, to was go back? It? Not really, eh? Yeah, you know, I'm not a huge school guy. Not that. Yeah, like I don't mind it. Like I, it was a great, you know, route for me and everything like that. And and but I I wanted to be a hockey player. Yeah, and uh, you know I just I don't think for a lot of people opportunities like that don't just fall in your lap, you know. And like I was the kind of guy that had to work for everything I was given. Yeah got and stuff like that and and uh when i got that opportunity like i wasn't gonna pass it up you know i was just like you know what i can always go back to school i can always do whatever i want to do after hockey but you know i don't know how many more opportunities like this i'm gonna get so for sure um and i i kind of still had bitterness from the year before like a little bit like how how things went and i was like you know what screw this i'm I'm, yeah i'm moving on like yeah and uh so that kind of was kind of my mindset with how that. pissed were your coaches when you kind of told funny, them? It was funny. It was funny you said that because uh, I don't know if my coach had like a wind of it or something like that. And, and uh, I remember practicing one day before we went to the final four, and he's like, "Yeah, anyone that would leave school early is stupid" or something like that. Because it was kind of a new thing, like sure. especially for our school, no one had ever left early and, yeah. and uh, stuff like that. And and in my head, I'm just sitting there. Out of here, as soon as I can get out of here. And uh, um, first contract to get him out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, yeah. And you know what? I remember having the conversation with them after, and, and uh, I brought it up. They're like, this is why I'm leaving. And, uh, you know, and I, with college hockey, I think, you know, you know a bit about it. Like, you can't ask for a trade. You, no, you, you, you're stuck there. And, and it's like, Every year there's a new class coming in, and, you know, what if I got off to a bad start the next year? And all of a sudden he said, you know what, they're, we're playing this freshman goalie, and and so you're not guaranteed anything in this game. This game, you know, you're not guaranteed anything. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was my opportunity, and uh, I kind of explained that to them. And, and, you know, I bet you looking back now, if we ran into each other, they would probably understand it a lot more now. You know, yeah. guys have – it's a little more common now and stuff like that. But uh, – it was definitely, a, it was a huge transition. Like when I went, you know, like I said, I was played really one year of college hockey and then yeah. jumping, and it was like holy shit! Like how how crazy was that jump though, skill set wise from oh, college man. to pro? Right? It was it was it was wild, and especially coming from where I came from as such a small town, and and I remember like, you know. Within a few months, I was in a locker room in training camp. Like, and there's Lucic, there's Chara, there's Bergeron, there's all these guys. And I remember just being like, Jesus, like that happened so fast. And and I had that mindset. I was almost like caught up as a fan. And you can't be like that. And it's easy for me to say now. Like, I've learned a lot of things. And and I look back on that experience and. You know, obviously everyone's like, oh, I wish I could have a do-over, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I look back on it, and I, maturity-wise, I, I wasn't ready for it. And, um, you know, it was a great experience. I learned a lot, and it was cool. But, um, you know, I was still caught up as a fan, kind of, you know, and instead of having that mentality, well, I belong to be here. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I'm on, I signed with the same team you were signed with, you know, like, so... That is a huge. That was a huge part of it, right? Yeah. Especially as a goalie, you know, you get these guys just ripping pucks, and you're never. You're like, holy shit! Like, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's a lot of guys when they go to their first camp. Let's say it's a you know the first rookie camp, and then they get invited to main camp as a draft pick or, or sign free agent signing. I think a lot of them, a lot of it's just natural, man. You grew up watching. Chara play and exactly. whoever was in the, I, who who's in that there was Thomas or, Thomas yeah. or Rask. And so I, I mean you yeah. watch these guys as a young goalie of Vesna and you're like right, you're like yeah. holy like it's it's normal and natural you know and even as a goalie I think harder because when that when whoever's coming down Bergeron's coming down and shoot on you you're not even thinking the shot you're just like you that's Bergeron well you can't that's, hide right like you're not like <laughs> you're not like that winger in camp that can just like totally hide right like you're there's nowhere to go. Everyone's watching you that's when right. the shot's taken. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's no, I, awesome. It was, uh, like I said, it was it was one of those, I look back on it now, and it was a different time back then too, you know, where it was more of a veteran league, and, and yeah. things have definitely changed and transitioned in the way that 
the coaching and all that kind of stuff is, but it was a huge adjustment. And uh, like I said, I, I really don't think I found it until, you know, I went off to Russia and, and I started looking back on some of the stuff and, and uh, I'm like, oh, okay. Like starting to figure it out, like yeah. starting to figure out the game, the pro game. And, and uh, it takes time. Like, yeah. So how how long did you end up staying in North America? So you signed with Boston. I signed a two year deal and I played, so played two years. Yeah, so played in the A for you know up a little bit, I think, right? You got called yeah, up a bit yeah, and then yeah. in the A, and then once that deal expired, what did you kind of already have your mind made up of maybe exploring different some different stuff? I did, and part of it was just Boston was loaded. Like I remember like getting to camp and Tim Thomas was like coming off the Vesna, and they had this other goalie there, Tuka. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was being, all right. I remember being like. He won the Vesna. I'm looking on the other end. I'm like, and he's better. Right. The guy on the other end's better. And I'm just like, holy shit. Where do I fit in here? Yeah, I'm like, and I was so, f I had so much, like I was so far behind. Like I needed to develop. Like sure. I, you know, I wasn't, wasn't ready. And, and so at Providence, we had this skill coach who was a Russian guy. And uh, he would always stay on the ice after practice and do drills with, guys and all that and I was the second goalie and so I'd always stay out there and just get peppered and um, I got to know this guy pretty good and he, he, I think he loved it because I would just sit out there and I'd take five or six off the head every day sure. and like you know and just stay out there and take shots and and I remember shooting the shit with him one day and I had heard about this league like the KHL and stuff like that and I just kind of was you know asking him questions about it like you know how good's a league like, yeah how, sure. do you, how do you get over there like what kind of money can you make all these kind of questions. And uh, he's like, oh, no problem. Like, you want to go, I send you there. And I'm thinking in my head, oh, okay, whatever. And uh, as the year went on and the year went on, I, I remember reaching out to him. I was like, you know, do you think I could go over there? He's like, oh, yes, of course. I I get you contract. And uh, sure, shit, the guy got me a contract. And and obviously, no I went through my agent and stuff yeah. like that. But um and my my first general manager over there was Alexei Zhamnov, who yeah yeah. So yeah. that was kind of a nice, you know, you got a, a guy that's pretty Played familiar, North, yeah, North America yeah. for the transition yeah. and stuff like that. And and uh, you know, I just looked at the opportunity, and uh, I was like, you know what, I'm I'm gonna give it a shot. And that was kind of like that's kind of how my career how it kind of has been, you know, taking taking a risk here, taking a jump here, and and for the most part. It's usually worked. And yeah. uh, so jumped over there and, uh, yeah, played over there for three years. So And was the money pretty good, like, compared to North American money for what you make in the A as far as, you know, yeah. um, and you don't have to give dollar amounts exactly, but, like, because North America as, a, as an entry-level guy, you can make 75, right. 50, exactly. 60, yeah, like 70, you right? You bonuses and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, that yeah. Too, but still, yeah. you're taxed pretty hard and everything like yeah. that. Um, yeah, the money's – and obviously – it varies quite a bit from the top team sure. to the bottom team and stuff like yeah. that. But yeah, the money is for a young player going. You know, you're 100%. looking at your future, but you're like, I'm not gonna. I'm behind these two guys. The 100%. league's stacked with goaltenders. Hundred percent. I can go over there, and make some good money for a couple of years, and right? Then, yeah. And you never know. Like you know, you get over there, you establish yourself, and you, you play. And like I said, I played there for three years, and and uh, yeah, that was definitely luring was the money, right? Mm -hmm. Which is. Maybe not what everyone wants to hear, but it's it's a business, right? And no, and it's like you said something earlier that I thought was interesting about call going to college, the pro, and opportunity came knocking. Yeah, you could have maybe played another year, maybe played sure. another two years and got your degree, but right. what if you blow a Neo? What if you blow? Well, you know, and that's the one thing that comes up with parents a lot of times is you know look at the look at now for you leaving school, signing a deal, you get a little bit of money. You know, well, you know what? If I want to go back to school, I have a little bit of money here. I can go back to school, so I'm okay there if I ever decide to do that. And man, now I get a chance to like pursue my dream a bit, and, 100%. and you know, and you never know where it's going to take you. And look, yeah. at, I'm still going. Like it's it's yeah. still like I'm still playing. And, yeah. And I think our society, I think it's getting a little bit better, but I think we're so caught up on this. Like you have to have a university degree. You got you finish school. Where are you going to school? What are you going to take at school? Well, like you're 18 years old. How are you going to decide? You want to spend all this money at university? I know this is a whole different topic. But no, it, no, I like it. It's, it's, yeah, it's like for sure. You're going to commit all this money to university at 18 years old. And like at 18 years old, I was, school was the last thing on my mind. Like, like you know, you're telling some kid at 18, okay, you're going into engineering. That's what you're going to do for the next 50 years or 40 years. And it's like you're spending this money at school 
And it, that's a lot of pressure on a kid. And, and what, if, what if at 21 you decide, you know what, ah, I don't like it anymore. You know, I just think our society was the pressure on kids to, like, get this education. you got to have this university degree. you got to go to school. And I'm not saying school is a great thing. It really is. It's, it's, I have a lot of great memories, and it's, you learn a lot of things in school. But you can go to school anytime. Yeah. Like, there's, like if you're 22 and you want to go to school, go to school. Like, what? It's not going anywhere. Yeah. So I, 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 told, I think the, the whole time stamp on life, I think, is yeah. wrong. You know, yeah. like, who, and who, who makes these rules? Well, and I think it sounds like your parents were my parents were definitely there was no timeline on go to go to, go, you know, go to finish high school, then go to university, then get a job, get a house, get married. There's none of that. It was go explore. And I think, you know, even what you did or anyone that's traveled and said, yeah, I'm taking a year off. I'm going to go around yeah. the world. I'm taking two years off. I'm going to go work. And. Well, man, that 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 education that you get on just oh, knowing man. different countries, yeah. knowing different places, knowing how to get around, knowing life different skills. currencies, yeah, like uh, that to me is a massive piece of education for life. For sure. Let alone learning about history of, you know, whatever in university that you're paying yeah. three grand for this course. It's a joke. You 100%, know, percent. I couldn't so, agree yeah. more. It's it, yeah, it, yeah. So no, it's it, and so now going from there. So you're in the KHL. Um, what was the next step from that? from the KHL was that when you kind of got into the whole kind of going over to Asia and stuff like that? Yeah. Or? So I, I was, uh, I look back, like I didn't play in like the nicest cities. Like I was playing in some like pretty rough cities <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you know, it, it wore on you a little bit. Like, uh, you know, the one year I was over there during the NHL lockout and that was amazing. Like I had a, I had a great year, um, got to play against the, some of the best players in the world. And that was really cool. And that was a step in my development where I was like, holy cow. Okay. I, that was my best year when I was over there. And I was like, man, I can play with these guys. Yeah. I'm like, and that was a huge mindset thing for me where I was like, okay, you know, if I can stop Malkin on a breakaway, like who can't I stop? You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. that once I understood some, that kind of stuff, um, it was a huge thing for me. And then, uh, the f following year I ended up blowing out my knee. So I only played like 19 or 20 games. And that was kind of, that was hard because you're stuck over there. You're hurt. Uh, the medical care isn't necessarily the, what you're used to. Yeah. And I was getting a lot of pressure from the team. Like, come on, like, why aren't you playing? Like, you're fine. Like, and I just, I knew I wasn't like, I, you know, your body, yeah, yeah, you know, your body. Sure. And it wasn't yeah. that I didn't want to play. And it was a, so that really wore on me and uh, kind of drained me. And I wasn't necessarily not willing to go back to Russia. I just, I wanted to go to somewhere a little bit nicer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I had a couple offers to go to the same kind of places that I was in. And I just, I was humming and hawing, I was waiting and we were talking earlier about uh, Steve Beck, and I met him through some pro skates in the Kamoka area and stuff like that. And he had brought, he said to me a bunch of times, he was like, man, like, if you ever want to go over here and play, you know, you should try it, blah, blah, blah. And I was kind of, I wasn't really ready for it. And uh, I, now I was kind of getting open to it. And I had a couple other offers to go to Europe and other places like that. And, but I was just looking for something different. And, uh, he, so I got into contact with him and he's like, Matt, he's like, if you don't want to go this year, he's like, this is your last chance because they're going to get someone else. Um, another goalie in to get like a passport and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, so I made some calls, called some guys that were playing there, did some like research on it. And, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a try. And, uh, I remember at the time, like people were like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, like, you know what? I, 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 I think it's a smart move. And, 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 uh, yeah, and it's been it's been awesome, man. And for those who don't know, it's going to play pro professional hockey in Korea, right? Right. Which, yeah. And we which, have like a like it's like an Asian an Asian hockey league over there, and then we play in Japan, Russia, and China, and then um, I got my Korean citizenship, so you know we play. I play for Team Korea as well, which you know we go all over Europe and play in World Championships and different tournaments like that. So um, yeah, it's definitely good to see the world. But I mean, like you know. It, Again, you make a decision that's you know what maybe this is this will be something cool, something different. Right. Again, what a educational experience living over there oh, and man. learning what you did. But I mean, on top of that too, you got to play in world championships. You got to play in the Olympics. Like oh, you got to, sure. yeah. Do, it, you know what I mean? Like how amazing is that? And and I've got the experience uh, to live in that culture too, live in that country that 
you know, it's I don't know if you if you haven't been there, it's one of the it's no, the I greatest haven't. place. It's yeah. It's, Seoul, Seoul is one of the best cities I've ever been to. I remember, like, <laughs> I remember my first weekend there. Like, I was coming from Russia. I remember my first weekend there, and, the, you know, we went out uh, for dinner in the town. We had the weekend off, went out for dinner, went out for some drinks and stuff like that. And I remember being like, like, man, this is, like, unbelievable. I'm like, this is like I'm on a holiday, like a <laughs> vacation right now. I'm like, this is so nice. And, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's a great place to live, great people. Um I've been very, very fortunate over there. You know, they've taken really good care of me, and it's been a great experience. Like you said, got to play in some pretty cool tournaments and um, gotten to play with a lot of the same guys for a long time. So it's, it's you know, it's become a brotherhood. And yeah, that's kind cool. Of stuff. Yeah, so yeah. it's good. Now, what was it like? I mean, you know, we talk about being a young hockey player. Obviously, one of our goals as a young hockey player is to play in the NHL, which mm-hmm. you kind of achieved that and had a chance to go to training camps and, and be a part of it, don the jersey for games, things like that. Yeah. But another thing I think a lot of young players think about every four years when the Winter Olympics come around, it's like, man, I'd love to play in the Olympic team. I want to don the, the yeah. Team Canada jersey or whatever that is, right? Now, you kind of got got there a different yeah. way, but what was the like? What were the Olympics like, man? Was it pretty yeah, – was, was it kind of what you thought it was going to be? Was it different than what you thought it was going to be? Was it – Honestly, I didn't really know what it was going to be. I didn't yeah. really have, like, a ton of expectations. Um, there was a lot of buildup. You know, like we were playing in all these tournaments and exhibition games. And, and, uh, you know, I remember we went and played in this tournament in Moscow. It was like before the Olympics. It might have been in like early December and the Olympics were in February or something like that. And in the tournament we were playing like the Czech team, Team Canada was there, Sweden, Russia, Finland, and and then us. And I remember just like sitting there being like, holy shit, like (laughs) this is going to be crazy. And. And I, we were playing Canada. Like, Canada was our first game. And I, I had so much anxiety. You know, like, it was one of those things that I'm glad that we played Canada before when we played them in the Olympics just to get it out of the way. Sure. And, uh, you know, and it was a great game. I think we lost, like, 2-1 or something like that. Wow. And yeah, it was, it was a good game. And But I remember that feeling. Um, you know, you're sit, you know, you're doing the national anthems or something, and you're on the blue line, and you look across and you see that Canadian jersey. And it was a weird feeling. It was, it was, it's hard to explain to someone. Um, but yeah, it was weird. And I was lucky that I'd been in Korea um, long enough that I felt very comfortable, like wearing the Korean jersey. Yeah, you were proud of the country. Proud, right? like, you know, yeah. and because, yeah. because it wasn't like that when I first did it, you know, I, I felt awkward. I felt like sure. everyone was looking at me and, and, you know, and, and, you know, as I played longer and longer over there and played more games, it just became natural. Yeah. And so once we played Canada and all these other countries, to get that out of the way before the Olympics and all that kind of stuff was huge. You know, you just get that anxiety and all that kind of stuff yeah. out of the way. And and so then when we went and played them, it was just another hockey game. Yeah. And, uh, but it obviously, it was cool. You know, it, it's, uh, I, I haven't really reflected on it a ton as I'm still playing, I think like as I'm when I'm done or something like that, I'll maybe reflect on it more. Yeah. Um, like conversations like this, I think about it, and you know, the memories are pretty cool. You know, the village. You know, and it, when you talk about the Olympics, it isn't just hockey. It, no, it's, it's so much more, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. it's it's the the venue, it's the Olympic Village, it's the all that kind of stuff, and you know, the hockey is just such a small part of it. It's the build-up to the tournament. All these, like, pre-tournaments that we played in where we traveled around Europe as a team and the memories we made, sure. like, you know, all these kind of things. And so, yeah, it's not just... I don't look at it as just one event. I look at it as, like, an experience of a couple years and and uh, a lot of cool things and a lot of, a lot of amazing memories, a lot of amazing people that I got to do it with. And, you know, some of the, some of the stuff in the Olympics, like... Uh, you know, you'd run into these stars that, you know, people that, you know, are winning gold medals and all these kind of things. And when you're in the village, like everyone's the same, like there's no egos. There's no, it's cool. Yeah. It's really cool. It's, yeah. it's, uh, everyone's hanging out together and, and, uh, having a good time. And it's, it's a pretty cool experience. It's hard to explain, but, uh, yeah, it's wild, man. It's, it's, it's cool. Yeah. How are the how are the Koreans when you guys did well against Canada and then obviously the Olympics you played them again and you know yeah. had a, obviously un, like awesome. But um, how how was that? Like how was the feedback when you guys got back or even during like was was it? 
it was cool. It definitely pretty, yeah, puts, it must have been pretty neat to, to to feel that. Yeah, it definitely like put hockey on the map a little bit there, and and we definitely got a little more recognition and stuff like that. Like, you know, it's a big city, it's, and you know, there's a lot going on, and and so you know, you go to some places, you get recognized once in a while and stuff like that, but you know, after that, you definitely you know, you're doing more media stuff. Sure. You're doing, you know, we're doing commercials and stuff like that, advertising stuff. And, you know, even in the airport, you get recognized and stuff like that. So it definitely put it on the map more. Um, obviously, with what's going on in the world right now, it's definitely killing a bit of the buzz and yeah. everything like that. So, yeah, for sure. Um, but, no, it, it was cool. It was, uh, I feel very fortunate, you know, that I was, you know, not a lot of people get to say they were able to participate in the Olympics, right? So, um, I feel very fortunate, man. Like it's, you know, the game. The game doesn't owe me anything. You know, it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's been awesome. So, oh, it's great, man. Now, um, you know, you've got an opportunity now. Obviously, married and, and you got a couple of kids and a new one. Congratulations that just Thanks, uh, entered your life, which is yeah. which is amazing. Yeah. Um, but you know, doing this with your family, how much different was it doing it? When you were just oh, kind of man. alone, and then oh. now, now, <laughs> now, now with two kids. Well, I guess it'll be two kids coming up because there's only one before that. But um, I put a lot more work in at the rink now than I used to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were talking about now that uh, one and a half hour time, two hour time slots, about a six hour time slot at the rink. Yeah, yeah. no, it's it's uh, it's great, man. And as a parent, you know, you, obviously we got two healthy kids, and that's all you can ask for. And uh, you know, I'm hoping like uh, my son. You know, he got to see me a bit. He was able to go to the Olympics and stuff like that, but he was he was young. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I, that's part of the reason I hope I can keep playing. And, and you know, I want my son to be able to see me play a little bit before sure. and remember it. And, and um, it changes things. And, you know, you, you realize you don't need as much sleep as you maybe think you do. <laughs> uh, you know, things like that. That uh, extra nap every day yeah, is needed. You, yeah, <laughs> you just you become a little less selfish, I guess. Um but no, it's great, and it definitely puts things into perspective too. You know, you you have that bad game, and you know, you, you, when you come home after the game, your kid doesn't care if you had a bad game or yeah. not. You know, he's still happy to see you. Yeah, and uh, you know that definitely puts things into perspective, right? Like it's okay, maybe it isn't the end of the world. You know, um, so it helps. You know, I I remember like after we had my first son, you know, I played some of the best hockey in my career. You know, I was on cloud nine, like just, eh, yeah, whatever, you know, whatever happens, happens. You know, I get to kind of go home and see my family and yeah. stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's quite a thing. So It definitely changes uh, how, how you view everything, right? Like as far as just even a job, like, you know, everything comes a little bit different. Like I want to make sure they have money for school. I want to make sure they, we yeah. have a house to live in. I want to make sure, like you, just your priorities change a little bit. Where, Big time, you know, you know and yeah. I feel like almost you become a little more simple. You know? Yeah. Like, not so worried about the extras and the, yeah. the how things look maybe as much and you know it's just uh, no definitely take care of your family and yeah that's all yeah no for sure now we were talking about this a little bit before but um and kind of wrap I don't want to keep you here too long but um which this has been awesome but moving on from hockey like you know when you look at you know and we talked about this a little bit it's hard when you're in the mix and you're in the game and you're playing and and your day to day you know you don't really think about life after hockey now we've had a bit of a break which has been awkward yeah. and weird for everybody but. I think not, not, not just you. A lot of the guys I talk about are now kind of thinking like, oh man, if this doesn't come back, what you know, or whatever, or two, three years from now, what am I going to do? And right. guys have more time right now to think about what else they enjoy doing. Like even right now, there's a bunch of guys that have started their own little like hockey development companies uh, in this last couple of months because they have nothing to do and they're like, right. oh, I might as well rent some ice and do some skill stuff right. or whatever, right? Um, but have, have you given some thought to that, or have you kind of have any idea of kind of stuff that you know that you like to get into or something you know, kind of life after hockey type thing? sure like i yeah sometimes when you have more time it's it sucks always, yeah you, <laughs> it sucks you, you yeah. think you think too much but, yeah uh for sure you know like i I'm, I'm all over the place you know there's definitely times where i think like you know do something simple you know like work on a farm from one of my buddies or do stuff like that and then there's other times that i think maybe i want to get into the hockey side of it and you know and you know watch work with young goalies and watch them develop and you know see what i can do with that and you know, I struggle with it all the time. You know, what's the balance? You know, what do I want to dive right in or do I want to take my time? Or, you know, it, it's one of those things, and you touched on it, where as you're still playing, it's hard to really narrow in on that because 
in my I'm still a hockey player like that's and that's all you know like yeah and uh, and you you don't want to lose that mindset either you don't want to lose that edge where you where you're I feel like if you start to think think about I'm retiring then maybe it leaks in your game or something <laughs> like that yeah. you know and so yeah. I, I you know I it's tough but um I've definitely thought about it more and, and I, I, I really don't know what it's going to be. You know, I thought time, maybe I'm going to start my own business, you know, maybe what, you know, maybe, but there's not one thing right now that I could say, I know for sure. Like that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. You know, it's, it's definitely not, I don't have that. And I, I truly believe that it's been like this through my career. Like when the opportunity comes, something's going to pop up for and, sure. and, and you're going to know, you know that all right give, this is what i want to do and and I, I truly believe too if you if you're a good person you treat people the right way and and opportunities are going to come and and you know you just got to be willing to jump on it and and sometimes that means take a risk sometimes you know it might not be comfortable it might be something that you're like oh, i don't know but you, yeah you got to try it man and 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 it's I don't, what i feel how six how people have become successful you know well i think you're right I mean, even going to korea like it was a bit of sure. risk guys were like you're an idiot what are you doing you're killing yeah. your career and like exactly. that turned out pretty good right? yeah like, you know a lot of guys that said that are yeah i'm playing and i'm still playing exactly so, so, yeah yeah one thing too i was talking to somebody that's playing in the nhl now he was a young kid at the time and uh you know has done very well signed a good deal he's, he's set basically but uh, you know, wasn't sure about school or OHL or whatever at the time and kind of looking back on it now, I was just talking to him last, last summer, I think it was, and I was like, pretty happy that you didn't go to school right now. And like kind of joke, but he's going to have a whole different education playing professional hockey, obviously, but also to your point, good guy, leader, he's going to have enough connections that if he wants to get into scouting, or if he wants to get, get into, into something, he'll be able to dabble in it, check yeah. it out, see if he likes it, right? And that's all about building relationships and, and being a good person and putting the time and the work and all that kind of stuff, you know? So And that that's what that's what life's about. For you know, sure. Not just like sport, like that's life. Yeah. That's whatever. And I always say like I learned more and I I don't want this to come off the wrong way about school and stuff like that, but I I learned way more in a locker room and at the hockey rink than I ever learned in a classroom. Yeah. And about, you know, dedication, sacrifice, you know, being a team team player, you know, all these kind of things that translate into the real world, you know, into a work environment. And and don't get me wrong, like if you want to be a lawyer or a doctor, like yeah, yeah, you gotta go to school. Yeah. Um but that was never in my But in I, th my I think I think you bring up a good point. Like if you're in limbo on what you want to do, you're going to go to school and take a general arts exactly, or you're going to take exactly. a social science. Like, okay, fine. But you're going to, when you get out of there, you're going to realize I needed something else. I got to go get my master's or I got to go do this. So why not take a year off and go travel or get a job and figure some 100%. different things out, right? And I think, because I have no issues with school or not school, but I think, if you're going to be a doctor, that's specialized. You're going to be an engineer. You know you want to do that. Go do it. And like you got to have the schooling. Exactly. You know, but, but if you're not sure, man, why spend your tire spending money for no reason and take you six, seven years to get a degree that you could have gotten three or four and you're in the same spot you were four or five years ago, right? 100%. And I I, yeah. I don't want to give off the impression that like I'm totally against school. Like I, I played NCAA and, you know, that was my my path to, to what I'm doing now. And it was great. You know, it's a great route to take. And, and uh, I think... Yeah, there's nothing wrong with schools. If you can get the education, it's great. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to real world, real life things, the game of hockey has given me so much more. Like yeah. it's given me, I've learned so, even about myself, man. Like you learn so much about yourself in tough situations, pressure situations, stressful situations, like how to handle it, how to, you know, perform in these kind of situations. Like, yeah. You know, you, you can't learn that in a classroom, you know, like, yeah. uh, so yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's been good to me. Yeah. It's awesome, man. No, it's good. Well, man, I, I appreciate you stopping by obviously. And I'd, I'd love to do if you're cool with it and hopefully, hopefully you're not here in another month or two yeah. and things <laughs> get going again. But if you are, I'd love to do a follow up cause there's a whole other piece that I want to talk to you about with even just being a goalie and how you track players and how you pick up tendencies and all that kind yeah, of stuff. I'd love exactly. to get into a bunch of that stuff with you. Um, and yeah, more on the kind of nerding out on the goalie side of being a, being a sure. player. Cause that's all 
foreign to me, but I know when I played, I always ask goalies. Like, I like to talk to, to goalies just about, hey, what do you see in the shot? Or, and a lot of them would tell me, oh, every time you go to your backhand, you stick handle first and go to your backhand. I'm like, oh, I didn't know, right? So, uh, but there's a whole other piece that I'd love to chat you a little bit about, but I really appreciate you. For sure. Stopping by, man. This is awesome. And uh, yeah, thanks for sharing your story. It was, it was good, man. Really good. Sounds and best good. of luck with those two little munchkins you got at home. Yeah, thanks, man. And your wife. Thanks. <laughs> All right, buddy. Three steps, huge strides in the performance that I might not be the player I am today. 